Most people think financial analysis is just spreadsheets and ratios, but real CFOs know it comes down to just three types of analysis. One that shows you what changed, one that shows you how efficient you are, and the other that explains why it's happening. And after managing this for over a hundred companies in my career, in this video, I'll show you how to analyze any business like a true CFO using this three-part framework. So you can deliver insights that drive real decisions. Here, I have a summary of my three financial statements. And while this information is helpful, it lacks something critical. Context. How does this compare to last period? Let's add that in. Now, suddenly, I could see whether I grew this period or shrunk. And if I'm a seasonal business, it's also relevant to understand how I compare to this same period last year. This is what's known as horizontal analysis, where you compare performance across a different time, scenario, or benchmark to understand what the numbers really mean. And when I say scenario, that could be your budget, what you thought would happen, or even a re-forecast based on current trends. And a benchmark might be another business, ideally in the same industry, to help you understand how you stack up. The key is, you're not just looking at a number, you're looking at what the number means compared to something else. And that's what helps you identify trends, hopefully ones that are heading in the right direction. But while horizontal analysis is powerful, it's really only one lens. You also need the opposite view. Let's revisit our profit and loss. We see income at the top, expenses below, and a few key profitability metrics in between. First up, gross profit. That's your revenue minus your cost of goods sold. Next, subtract out operating expenses to get net operating income. And finally, you take all your expenses subtracted from all of your income, and that is your net income. But here's the thing. Even with all that detail, it's hard to say whether these numbers are actually strong or efficient. That's where margins come in. They tell you what percentage of each sale is left after you subtract out certain costs. So gross margin is gross profit divided by revenue. Operating margin is operating income divided by revenue. And then net margin, well, you guessed it, your net income divided by revenue. These three give you a powerful snapshot of profitability and they're a big part of something called vertical analysis. Vertical analysis compares one metric to another, usually within the same time period. Margins are the most common use case, but you can also apply this to expenses. What percentage of your revenue is going to marketing or salaries or to software? You can even compare an expense to total cost to see where your biggest spend area lies. These insights are way more meaningful than just raw dollar amounts. But my favorite vertical analysis tool, ratios. For example, return on equity might be the most important ratio for investors because it shows how efficiently a company turns investment into profit. But there are a ton of other ones, return on assets, debt to equity, current ratio, quick ratio, and more. All of them give you a different angle on how the business is performing. So vertical analysis is all about taking that one number and asking, compared to what in that same period? And as you start diving into some of these margins, you may even go deeper into one of my favorite levels of analysis. See, every business needs capital. Sometimes that comes from investors. Sometimes it comes from lenders. But by far, the best kind of capital is the one that comes from customers. And we call that sales. Each sale is the starting point for how much money you can reinvest into growth or distribute out to the owners of the business. That's why everything stems from understanding your unit level economics. What happens at each level of each sale? This is where you really dig into your pricing strategy and cost structure. For example, I once worked with an e-commerce company right as they brought on a new director of finance. As I was wrapping up my engagement, he built a full forecast just using unit economics. It was brilliant. It gave complete clarity into what was happening with every transaction. Which products had the highest margins, where pricing could increase, where costs could be reduced, and which offerings to double down on. This level of insight helps you optimize profitability one unit at a time. But this final analysis may be the toughest, but it can be worth it. So far, we've been working with metrics you can pull straight from your financial statements. Things built using GAAP, or generally accepted accounting principles. These are standardized, clearly defined, and pretty hard to manipulate. If you have the financial statements, you can usually calculate them on your own. But non-GAAP metrics, well, that's a whole different game. Take EBITDA, for example. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. 
People love EBITDA because it's often used as a rough proxy for free cash flows. It also helps compare businesses within the same industries. But because it's non-GAAP, it's not standardized. That means companies can define it pretty much however they want. And that opens the door for tons of manipulation. And EBITDA is really just the tip of the iceberg. If you work in SaaS, you've probably heard of MRR, or monthly recurring revenue, or ARR, which is annual recurring revenue. Then there's churn, net dollar retention, CAC payback. And if you're an e-commerce company, it might be average order value or return rate or repurchase rate or gross merchandise value. These metrics can be incredibly useful, but they require much more detailed data. Customer level data, product level data, subscription cohorts, the list goes on. And if you're looking for a quick cheat sheet on a bunch of helpful metrics, you can download my, well, give me one sec. This periodic table of financial metrics. This is one of my favorite infographics that we ever created. And it tells you all sorts of things like cash conversion cycle or levered free cash flows or net income margin. You can go ahead and download that from the description whenever you're ready. All right, one sec, let me put this back. Now, there's no universal way to calculate a lot of these metrics, which can leave them subject to interpretation. But despite all that, investors still love seeing these metrics. Why? because they give you insight into what gap metrics often miss, key performance indicators. But getting all of this into a clean Excel file for analysis, ah, that's a pain. That's why I built ModelWiz. It connects directly to QuickBooks, pulls in your data, and calculates everything for you, from financial statements to advanced KPIs, all in just a few clicks. And when you're ready to present your findings, just hit this export to PDF button, and you'll have this beautifully looking PDF. Now, this isn't some tool I'm promoting. This is actually our tool that we've developed after five years. And you can try it entirely for free at modelwiz.com. Now, we talked about a lot, so let's just do a really quick recap. One of the fastest ways to analyze business performance is by comparing your results to something else, a prior period or a scenario or benchmark. This gives you the context you need to understand what the numbers actually mean. But context alone isn't enough. You also need to look at efficiency, and that's margins, expense ratios, and how each line item stacks up relative to a total. That's where unit level economics come in. By analyzing the price and cost of each product, you build a stronger foundation for scale. And to truly scale, you'll need performance metrics, key indicators that highlight the financial health of your business across every area. And if you made it this far, it's clear that you're serious about growing in financial planning and analysis. But analysis is only half the battle. Next, you need to present your insights with impact. That's exactly what I cover right over here in this next video. Go check it out. I think you'll love it. I'm Josh, your CFO guy. And if this video helped you, drop a like, subscribe. All that stuff really helps the channel. And I'll catch you in the next one.